Hi everybody, uh, I miss you. Uh, making a little video right now about Mold's Five House. Uh, my son Drew is being the, the filmer. Drew, say hi. Hi. Thanks, Drew. Uh, Mold's Five House, a soft body animal with a hard shell. And we're talking about two shells. A uh, couple Mold's uh, Five House there are. There's, uh, there's clams, uh, there's uh, oysters, there's mussels, and then there's scallops. I uh, want to talk a little bit about the uh, structure of a Mold's Five House. Uh, first of all, a lot of them uh, have a neck. Uh, this is uh, the neck of a clam. The purpose of the neck is so that if the clam could bury itself in the sand, have its neck up out of the uh, sand so it could suck in uh, water and then it's a filter feeder. If it's away from the predators, then it's not going to be eaten. Uh, there's two parts of the cl uh, clam's neck. Uh, there's the incurred siphon and there's the excurred siphon. Incurred siphon sucks water in the excurrent siphon pushes water out. So what the clam does is it uh, buries itself in the sand, it sucks water in the incurrent siphon, and then it runs by these things, these black things I have up here, and they're gills. Uh, the gills are covered up by a sticky, th thick mucus, and then anything that's in the water is going to get stuck in those gills. Uh, from here, there's a tube that goes over here to its uh, stomach. Uh, so all this mucus gets moved up this tube and then it's going to get digested in the stomach. That's why when you eat clams or you go out and you dig clams, uh, you keep it in a bucket for a night uh, because as you dig them, some sand may get in here. And then uh, the clam doesn't want to eat the sand, so then it's going to spit out the sand up the excurrent siphon. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is that they have this real strong muscle that holds the two sh shells of a bivalve together, and it's called the abductor muscle. Like I got this clam right here, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to open it up, but I can't open it up because the abductor muscle is just flexing. But I really want to see the inside of this clam, but this clam is alive, and it's just flexing the abductor muscle. I'll tell you what, I got an idea. Drew, follow me over here. I got a microwave, Drew. Do you think I should? Yeah. I should? How long do you think I should put it in here? Don't know. Don't know? Uh, well, I got to get it until it gets hot enough that it's going to die. I just heard a pop, Drew. Do you think it died? Yeah. Now let's check it out, Drew. Drew, I'm going to open it up. Now, oh, look at Drew. Yeah, it's not alive anymore, so it can't flex the abductor muscle. I'm going to open it up, Drew. Drew, if you could get into here, I'll kind of show you. Drew, look at this. This is the neck right there. There's the incurrent siphon. There's the excurrent siphon. Uh, these black things right here are the gills. Oh, Drew, there's the abductor muscle right there that was holding the shell. And then there's going to be another one on this side. Um, and then this is going to be the stomach. Hey, Drew, when you eat a clam, what part of the clam do you eat? Um, the meat of it. The meat of it. And it's going to be the whole thing. True. everybody has their ethics, and my ethical code says that if you are going to kill something, well, you might as well eat it. <laughs> Should I do it, Drew? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no. oh, look at that, Drew. Look at that. There's the abductor muscle right there. Sometimes that's the best part. Stop laughing, Drew. You're making a camera move. Mm. Thanks, Drew. Let's follow me up here. Drew, there's a couple types of uh, most bivalves, Drew. Uh, Drew, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint. I'm going to quickly go through it. Uh, Drew, I'm going to go slideshow from the beginning. Uh, Drew, uh, there's these things that are called mussels. Mussels are different from clams in that the, their shell is kind of bluish and black. Uh, they do not have a neck, so they can't bury themselves in the sand. So what mussels do is they attach themselves to rocks or piers by these special threads that are called bissel threads. So you go down to the beach, you'll see this right there, and it's going to be a mussel. Uh, there's two types that are around here. There's a the Pacific mussel, and then there's a the California mussel. How they are different is that the Pacific mussel is that if you feel the shell, is nice and smooth. Whereas the California mussel, if you feel the, the shell, it's a little bit bumpy. Those are mussels. The next one are oysters. True, this is an oyster right there. Uh, there is no neck, so they can't bury themselves. Uh, oysters just kind of sit down at the bottom. They open up this shell just a little bit, and around there, there's going to be a bunch of uh, gills that are going to circulate water in and run it by, uh, by, by its gills to, to get its food. True, I heard that oysters may have a pearl. Should we see? 
True. If there's a pearl, then we can give it to mom. Okay. Drew, I got this, Drew. If I could just get this knife in here, Drew. I could, if I could just get this knife in there. It's if I could just get it in between the two shelves, Drew. Drew, uh, I hope I don't cut myself. Drew. Yeah, Drew, 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 Drew. I'm in. Now, Drew, if I could just find that, if I could just find that abductor muscle and cut that abductor muscle. I think it's a little bit further down here, Drew. That's it. Oh, 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 I'm in. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, it just, why this is really flexing this abductor muscle. I'm having quite a battle right now, Drew. I just gotta, I just, uh, there, I got it, I got it, I got it. There, there, there we go. Now, I cut the abductor muscle off of the shell. Just open this thing up, Drew. There. Oh, what do we see? Shucks, no pearl. But let me tell you what a pearl is, Drew. Uh, this oyster right here is a really soft flesh. And then if the oyster just opens up just a little bit and a piece of sand gets in there, and then every time the oyster shell would close, that piece of sand would rub up against the soft flesh and would cut the soft flesh. So what a pearl is, is a piece of sand does get in the oyster and then the oyster starts excreting this white stuff. And this white stuff then goes around that piece of sand and that's what makes a pearl. So this right here, it looks like a pearl. It feels like a pearl. It's the stuff that makes up pearls. In the middle of every pearl is a piece of sand. What uh, pearl farmers do is they get an oyster and they pry it up just ever so gently and then they put a piece of sand in there. <laughs> Why just put one piece of sand? They'll put four or five pieces of sand in there, let it sit there for about five years. And after five years, then they open it up and there's gonna be a pearl in there. Pearls are graded on how white they are and uh, how round uh, they are. There's a pearl that's out there, it's called the black pearl because the stuff that it secretes is gonna be black. So you open up a, a oyster of a black pearl, this is gonna be black. I got my ethical code, Drew. What should I do with this? Eat it. Seriously? Drew, I just gotta get this abductor muscle off this one here. There, there, okay, all right. All right, Drew. There, all right. Ready? Mm -hmm. Hasta la vista. I don't know how this is going in, Drew. I think I should just go like this. Oh my goodness grief. Oh, mm, 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 Drew, that was gross. Drew, uh, there's uh, two oysters that I found here in the Puget Sound. There's this one here that's, uh, that's called the Olympia oyster. And there's the one that I just ate. It's called the Pacific oyster. Drew, how they are different is the Olympia oyster is real small and it's almost a perfect circle, much like the letter O for Olympia. There's a fact about the Olympia oyster, Drew. They used to be the only oyster in the Puget Sound and now, uh, now, because they're so small, uh, now we have mostly Pacific oysters. Another fact about the Olympia oyster is they, they each year they switch teams. Uh, one year they're male, next year they're female, and then they're male, and then they're female. So every single year they switch sex. Third, the next one that I got here is Pacific oyster. Uh, it's a little oblong in shape. Uh, they grow much bigger, so these are the ones that are commercially harvested. I don't want to make this video too long because I know our attention span, Drew. So the next thing I'm going to do is talk about scallops. Drew, a scallop is this. And then this is just like a regular clam. So you can tell a scallop is different from a regular clam just by looking at it because the scallop has this right here. And this is called a flat base. So a clam doesn't have a flat base, but a scallop does have a flat base. Ah, I've seen this before. I know, the Shell gas station. The symbol is going to be a scallop. Uh, another thing about scallops, Drew, is they have these things. Uh, what each one of these little dots are up here are eyes. They have eyes. They have no neck, so they can't bury themselves in the sand. I wonder why they have eyes. Hmm. Drew, I didn't get any scallops today at the store, but I've had scallops before. And scallops, it's, uh, they're white, 
They're like a perfect circle. They're white and they're a perfect circle. They taste really good. True, what that thing that you eat of a scallop is, is their abductor muscle. And they have a huge abductor muscle. <laughs> Back to the eyes, Drew. Drew, they have eyes, they have no neck, and they have a huge abductor muscle. Why? I come over here. And it, Drew, I got it, Drew. I got it over here. True, Drew, are we there? No. Come on, Johnny Depp, where are you? Oh, we gotta go up there. starts going around, it's going to eat the scallops, but the scallops see it. And with their huge abductor muscle, they can open and close their shells really hard, and it moves water so fast that they can swim. That's why they have eyes, and that's why they have a huge abductor muscle. Because they don't have a neck, they can't bury themselves in the sand. three types of bivalves. We got mussels, we got mussels, we got oysters, we got scallops, and then the next and the most popular one are, are these clams. Um, this is one of the most common clam that you see down at the beach. Uh, it's called a nuttall's cockle. How do I remember a nuttall's cockle? It looks like something. It looks like something I like to eat sometimes, especially if I have some ranch dip. That's right. It looks like a Nuttles potato chip, uh, a Ruffles potato chip. You take this, you, you may think that it's Ruffles potato chip. It's not. It's the Nuttles cockle. Class, if you were here a little bit uh, this week, uh, we talk about this thing here, the gooey duck. Uh, the gooey duck is the biggest clam here in the Puget Sound. In fact, it's uh, the biggest burrowing clam in the world. There's a whole lot of gooey ducks that are here in the Puget Sound. Um, there's another clam that looks like the gooey duck, uh, a little bit smaller. Uh, it's called the Pacific Gaper. When you go down to Golden Gardens, uh, you will see uh, a gaper clam, smart board please, uh, a gaper clam, and you'll see a gooey duck. Um, the gooey duck has a neck that's three feet long. So you gotta dig a hole three feet deep to get a gooey duck. Don't do it. It's illegal to do it down in Golden Gardens. Uh, there are some places in the Puget Sound that's legal to do it, but you need a license to do it. Uh, it back to the uh, Golden Gardens and a gooey duck and a gaper. Both of them, if you look down right at the top of the neck, you're going to see the in-current siphon and the ex-current siphon. Uh, of a gaper, there's going to be these little fingers right here going into the in-current and ex-current siphon. So this week when you're at Golden Gardens and you see this huge clam neck sticking out of the sand, gently go right over it, take a picture of it. If it has the fingers, it's a gaper. If there's no fingers, it's the gooey duck. My last thing to say about bivalves is that they're like trees. Every single year, they add a new ring onto a shell. Uh, so by doing this, you can count how old uh, these bivalves are. Gooey ducks, they live for a super long time. Uh, the oldest gooey duck, 163 years old. They counted 163 rings of it. In fact, what they're doing is they're studying gooey ducks for climate change in the Puget Sound. They go out and they find a whole bunch of gooey ducks, and then they count the rings, and then they see the gap between the rings. If there's a big gap, that means there was ideal conditions for that gooey duck to, to grow that year. What would make it ideal conditions? Ah, there was a really cold, long winter. And because there's a real cold, long winter, it created a whole bunch of upwelling. That means there's a huge algae bloom. If there's a huge algae bloom, there's gonna be a lot of food for the gooey duck. So it's gonna grow a lot between those rings. I do, I have some oyster going up in my throat right now. I'm gonna end this video. Class, I miss you. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple of these videos. 